Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner and with me today is Diane Cobb. She's a fellow Benton County Master Gardener and also a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club. And today we're going to be talking about the Certified Wildlife Habitat Program um, provided by the National Wildlife Federation. And we'll be discussing also what you need to do in your garden in, in August, uh, other than water, water, water. Uh, there may be a few other things we'll talk about. Um, the upcoming events this month, there's not much going on in gardening in August, uh, but there is the Benton County Fair, and that starts uh, Wednesday, August 17th to Sunday, August 21st. And the Master Gardeners will have a booth again at the fair, and this year their theme is birds and your backyard garden. So. Um, we're uh, really anxious to, to have everyone come out to the county fair and see the, uh, the booth and, and enjoy the county fair and the heat. And maybe it'll be cooler in August than it is in July. But anyway, um, I think their theme of their um, backyard garden fits right into our program today with Diane. So we're going to be talking about that mm -hmm. National Wildlife Federation program today. Yes. I'm so glad to be here, Jerry. It's a real privilege to be here, and I'm real eager to spread the word about the Backyard uh, Wildlife Habitat as sponsored by the National Wildlife Federation. I'm sure some, many people watching today are aware of this program, right. and, uh, but we'll just talk about how to certify your backyard. Right. This is my right. this certificate. Is, this is an old program. and. Um, or, Oh, and since the 70s, <laughs> my certificate in St. Louis looked like this when my, my garden in St. Louis was certified. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they called it the Backyard Wildlife Habitat Program. So they've changed the name, but it's still basically right. the same program. And, and it's, it's still still in our backyard. Right. It's Or it's on our patios mm -hmm. or in a window box or just whatever we have that would accommodate right. a, a little creature, a little critter. And you don't have to have an extensive property. Oh, heavens no. Property. Um, our habitat happens to be a full acre, and we happen to be on a lake cove. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, I'd like to tell real quick how we got into this. Uh, we moved to Bella Vista in uh, December of 2000, and in the spring, I called the POA because there is a huge tree in our cove. Mm. and. Um, the gentleman answered the phone and he says, ma'am, now I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> they say ma'am. He says, ma'am, that is a habitat. That's the bass spawning ground and we don't want to mess with that. And I said, you know what? You're right. So I began to look into how I could expand on that mm -hmm. because we had this huge sweep of woods. So, and I knew a lot of little critters were living down there. Mm -hmm. So that got me started. In a magazine, I found the application very simple, two pages. You give your personal information, and then it's just check boxes. That's all it and is. It's all online. It's all online, That's great. also very They've fast and easy. They've got a website easy. we can go to, and it's. Uh... That's right. There's a minimal fee, fifteen bucks. But for that fee, you get on the national registry. You get your certificate. Uh, all kinds of honors and benefits, including this magazine, which is uh, National Wildlife, and it's chocked full of information about other habitats, what's happening in the world, as far as our wildlife problems, successes, all such as. Well, I'm going to have to get lovely. busy and get my uh, Bella Vista property on the uh, get that certified. Well, we're just going to talk larger. about that today. Okay. How to go about certifying. Right. Um, and everybody listening today, if you have a little paper and a pencil as we go through, you can check and see and you can say, well, by golly, I have flowers, mm -hmm. I have a bird bath, mm -hmm. I can register my as a uh, certified wildlife habitat. And if you don't have everything right now, August is a good time to make oh, sure you have yes. everything in place because yes. you can't work outside very much anyway. No, so no. This would be a good inside project for Absolutely. all of us. Absolutely. <laughs> Spent a lot of time uh, looking through magazines, right. maybe go off to the library. That's mm -hmm. a lovely cool spot right. to spend a hot summer right. afternoon, you know. Right. So, so um, but for your garden, uh, mm -hmm. we do have a Meet the Masters segment today yes, of we your do. garden. And we can see what um, what her wildlife 
habitat looks like. Well, I am so thrilled to be here and share my garden yes. with all these folks. And you're being introduced on this uh, segment by I'm a Lulu. Now, I'm a Lulu is a character that's been created by Janice Kennedy. That's and Janice right. Kennedy is our new president of the Bella Vista Garden Club. But her character, I'm a Lulu, is just 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 wonderful. Well, you know, and she's a, from over in Toad's. Stuff. From Toad's. From Toad's. Right. So, so we'll be talking yeah. about her a little later too. So let's mm -hmm. um, visit Diane's beautiful garden. <laughs> Hey, ain't anybody home here? Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! I'm looking for Diane Corncob and her husband Reed. My name's Ima Lulu, and I come all the way up here from Toadsuck, Arkansas, just to see this incredible garden, and you've got to see it. We don't have anything like this in Toadsuck. I mean, we got a lot of critters and stuff, but let me tell you what. This is beautiful. And I want you to see this garden, y'all. I'm so glad you could come and be with us today. It's so hot, I tell you what, I feel like butter melting on a stack of buckwheat cakes. But I'm here and I'm enjoying everything about it. And I want you all to come with me and watch your step. I don't want you stepping on any of Diane Corncob's little snakes or any of those little creatures little creators and stuff that she got running around here. So would you just come on with me and enjoy yourself in this habitat for the wildlife? Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm a Lulu. I'm so glad you're here today. You're welcome to one particular harbor here on this mountainside in Bella Vista. It's 10 Cheviot Lane, and are you in for a treat today? We moved here December 10th. 2000. Coldest winter, Loch Lomond froze over. Uh, we spent that winter inside drawing up plans, dreaming dreams, and as soon as the spring thaw came, we came out and began to dig and plant uh, what we had, had dreamed up through the winter time. So, and of course, like every other newcomer to Bella Vista, we, I came out with a little trowel and I was going to plant some monkey grass by my mailbox. And I stuck that trowel and hit rock. So I went back and I got a shovel. And I came out and I was going to plant my monkey grass. I hit rock. And one of the neighbors came by and he nearly rolled down the hill laughing. He says, go buy an Arkansas shovel called a giant pickaxe. So after I did that, I got my monkey grass in the ground. <laughs> and thus began our planting. <laughs> well, my garden's style seems to be schizophrenic. It can't decide what personality it wants. It is a certified wildlife um, habitat, which means it is a four-season garden, which means it, is, uh, it covers a whole acre, so it has to be an easy care garden, not much maintenance. Now, that's not no maintenance, but not much, and it is organic. It's very easy to become a certified wildlife habitat. The National Federation of Wildlife, uh, has, you can check it out on the website, but basically all you need is the same things that you and I need. We need water, fresh, clear, drinkable water. You need food year-round. You need shelter from predators or the weather, whatever. And you need a p safe place to rear your young. So once you have those um, on your property and you need to use, eliminate chemicals. If you're inviting butterflies and bees and bugs to your garden, you don't want to be killing them with pesticides. Oh my, 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 my. Well, wait a minute, Diane. Um, I just have a question to ask you. These are the most incredible steps. You want to tell me where you found those steps? Let me tell you about these steps, Ima. Reed and I made these. We took a wheelbarrow and we dumped bags of concrete in it. We added water, stirred it with a hoe. I took metal flashing and shaped it kind of like a, just think a giant potato. Uh, he would shovel the concrete in and I shaped it with my little trowel, putting a lot of texture on top so nobody had slipped. But we made these one at a time 
We'd make one one day, come back and make the next one the next day until we had, had them all stacked up and all the way to the road. That's amazing. That's simply amazing. Well, it's easy. You could even do these in toad stuff. I could. You I could. could. I really could. could, huh? Could. I know what a potato looks like. I would love to tell you about our creatures. Uh, in addition to, to live animals, each year when the grandchildren come, we, uh, I have a project for them. And so one year we made dragons. Uh, they made a sign beyond this point, there be dragons. They, they'd go tromping through the woods and find a, a nice dead uh, tree or branch and they painted their dragons and so they're kind of along the, tr uh, what I call the middle trail, all along there. Uh, but we have a, a project every year that our little dragons have held up remarkably well. My earliest childhood memories is sitting out in my parents' uh, big garden, uh, munching on whatever they were picking at that particular time. I really remember munching peas. Uh, but next to that is my animals. I had cats, and I had ducks, and I had crows and squirrels, and I was like go around and rescuing animals, even as a young child. My daddy called me, you remember the, um, the Clampets, uh, Beverly Hillbillies? He'll call me Ellie Mae and my critters, because <laughs> I love the creatures. So, uh, so that's one of the in influences that, that uh, really inspired me to do the habitat here. I don't think you would ever guess that I am one great nurse, and I have a certificate to prove it. I um, work critical care and intensive care and telemetry at Plano uh, General when I started there, turned into the Plano Medical Center in Plano, Texas. Um, Next, you would never guess that I am a hum humanitarian, and I have a certificate to prove that. I had the opportunity and the privilege of going to Bolivia three times, uh, work with work teams through Cure America, coordinating whatever they identified as their village's biggest needs. Uh, the first trip was in 1992, and we worked in a clinic, we worked in a hospital, and we built a bathroom where the moms of children five years and younger could learn to wash their hands. Just wash their hands. We're teaching basic sanitary here. The impact of uh, Cure America in Bolivia has dropped the mortality rate like 68% since they started working there, uh, which is, has dramatically impacted the country. But they are very successful with that, and I had the privilege of helping. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. Wonderful. It took a bit of work and a big pickaxe. Right, that's what it takes. <laughs> that's what that it takes. I'm a Lulu is just such a character. Isn't she grand? Yes. We had the most fun wandering around looking at all the, the plants and introducing her to my critters. Yes. You saw the uh, little cat there on the bench beside me. He's one we rescued from uh, the Gravit Wild Animal Safari. Yeah. Uh, grandchildren had to save that little oh, kitten. Had to save so it. we brought okay. him home, yeah. He's a good one, though. But for the habitat, we can do uh, just minimal things, really, Absolutely. right? There's just a few Absolutely. basic things you have to have. Uh, according to the, if you want to certify for the, the um, uh, backyard habitat, uh, the National Federation for, um, National Wildlife Federation wants three food sources, and we'll go over all of these um, as we talk but only three food sources, one water source, two places for cover, and this can also be places where they can reproduce, often like a bird's nest. Mm -hmm. uh, they can shelter their little babies there in a, uh, a tree or a, a shrub or something, mm -hmm. so it's protected from predators. They also need protection from the weather. Mm -hmm. 
days like today, oh my goodness, they need some place to where they can get out of the sun and be cool, and of course, lots and lots of water. Um, and all of this done in an environmentally friendly way. Um, just think green, right? You know, things right. like that. So as we go through this, why don't you think about what you have available already or what you might want to add to create a wildlife habitat. Right. So if you just have these elements um, That's in your garden, and most of us do, most of we us do. have the shade. We and, do. Yeah. Um, and we, we have water. We might not mm -hmm. have a lake cove like we're fortunate mm -hmm. enough to have. But I've but got like three bird, bird baths. Absolutely. And bird baths are so easy mm -hmm. and the birds appreciate it so much. Right. And other creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, all kind of animals can scamper up and get a drink out of that Yes, bird like bath. the raccoons when they come up and knock yes, over indeed. some things. Yes, indeed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But it's there we for might them. we might not like that, but uh, the yeah. raccoons need our help. They they're, do. they're um, we have moved in, mm -hmm. and we have moved them out of their homes, mm -hmm. and so just just go do what you can, and then we get upset when they get in our garbage cans. Well, they do. They're just trying to find something to eat. Right. So just like the deers crossing our roads, mm -hmm. we have split habitats. Uh, we've converted our farms into residential areas. So animals are stressed pretty much uh, everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. But you can provide a few seeds, either flower seeds mm -hmm. or a, a bird feeder hanging on your back porch. Then you can sit on the inside and look and out watch and watch them. the birds. Right. That's on a hot summer day or when there's ice the coating winter. the ground. Right. Absolutely. Uh, you can have that bird bath, you can have a small pond, mm -hmm. you can do um, a butterfly puddling. Now this is really easy. Mm -hmm. Just take a shallow dish, put some sand and some stones in it, a little salt, a little bit of water, and you've got water for the butterflies. Right. Just keep it wet this time of year. Right, they like it damp. and You know, they you do. can also put like little fruit scraps in there. You have Absolutely. healings from peaches. You and know, that's when they a start fermenting. They, they just love that. And on that checklist we were talking about, right here, you can have other other food sources is a butterfly feeder. There you right. go. <laughs> and you can use like the, the saucer, a clay saucer from a pot. Mm -hmm. That's really a good uh, very, item very to use, easy. just a little saucer. And the salt is uh, important. The butterflies absorb those minerals through their um, feet and it's vital for the reproduction. Right. So very, right. very important there. So a little water, some food. Uh, you've got seeds, you've got nectar, pollen. You've got the nuts, big acorns falling from the trees. Mm -hmm. In the fall, please, please don't bag those up and haul them away. Get them out into the woods. By the end of winter, so many creatures will be relying on those acorns. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't just throw those away. Got your blackberries, you see those all over. Right. Good, great uh, food. Uh, dogwood berries. Oh, the birds love the dogwood. They birds. love the dogwood and the beauty berries. Mm -hmm. So, any of those, and beauty berry is just a gorgeous plant. It's one of our native plants. Mm -hmm. And by the way, speaking of native plants, if you go with the native plants, you're in a total win win situation. They've already solved the problem of survival, they uh, know how to handle our terrible summers here, although a curious thing, in the last 100 years, our heat index has gone up a good 20 degrees, mm -hmm. as we can tell, Right. but a lot of our plants have moved north along with the birds, and we've got a new um, ecosystem at work here. It's right. kind of in transition, mm -hmm. but they're um, available on the web, page after page of native plants. And these are geared to their pollinators and seed scatters. So the animals are crucial to the survival of these plants, and the plants are crucial uh, for a stable, balanced uh, ecosystem. Okay, cover, big trees, big birds, We've eagles, got a lot of big trees. Got a lot of big, a lot big, of big trees. trees. Squirrels love big, mm -hmm. big trees. Mm -hmm. um, so the big trees, small trees, those understory trees, right. down to shrubs. Uh, then you're down into um, flowers for the butterflies. Mm -hmm. All of these places uh, can be uh, hiding places, homes, and where they can be safe escape predators, depending right. upon each little creature there. Mm -hmm. So many, many options as far as cover and um, homes, right. including the water. Don't forget the fish and the waterfowl. So if you happen to be on a lake like we are, 
um, ducks are down in, mm -hmm. in the cove frequently there. And I do see on the lake sometime these duck um, duck houses. Yes. And you know, if you if you live on the lake, you can put up a little duck house. So that's, and, that's and easy that's, to do. That's a great way to provide a uh, a home. Also, the bluebird houses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very active bluebird society uh, in Bella Vista, and you can call. They'll come for a minimal fee and actually. Put, put the house up for right. you. Right, because since we are the bluebird capital of the United That's States, right. so That's this right. is, it's <laughs> wonderful. That's right. So. Um, okay, and then just let your garden go green. One thing, if you don't do anything else, please quit using pesticides. I know it'll kill those Japanese beetles, but we haven't had so many They're not too many anyway. this year. But it'll kill those. It'll also kill your butterflies, your ladybugs, your... Um, Honeybees, mm -hmm. it'll kill. It's indiscriminate. Um, kind of a guideline if you need to dress like for space exploration to use a chemical, mm -hmm. you might not want to use it. Right. Uh, it just can't be good for our environment. Um, mm -hmm. So that uh, use compost, mulch, build good strong soil. If you have good soil, you'll have a strong plant and it'll be more disease more resistant, resistant and able to bounce right. back. And all those creatures really won't kill what they rely on right. for their, their life. Right. Um, well, and then just certify. There you go. Be really easy. You can do it online. You just go online to that website. You can and go online. It's and so you easy. Can, you can also, somewhere right here, I have, is the address really? I don't know if they have, they have the website up there on the screen. It's just um, but here it is. NWF. You can call 1-800 and get all the information you need. They can send it out to you. You can go online at nfw.org and directly to that or backslash Garden for Wildlife. NWF. Or you can write in NFW. <laughs> NWF. <laughs> NFW. NWF. NWF. National Federation, National, National Wildlife. Wildlife. I always get that backwards. Yeah, I'm sorry. NWF. Just okay. Uh, and then there's their address. Great. So you can write uh, snail mail also. Well, I'm hoping we'll get a lot of the um, Bella Vista garden owners to uh, register Absolutely. and have in included into the 150,000 that's already registered that's right. or whatever. That's so right. we'll increase the uh, membership there. So for the month of August, um, mm -hmm. In, as long as you're doing your um, indoor thing with the certification, you might have mm -hmm. to do a few things outside in this heat, but it's just been relentless and the drought's oh, been terrible, is. but yes. you know, the only thing you can do in July is, again, like you did in August, is water, 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 mm -hmm. you know, attend your, your plants as best you can, try to water early in the morning or late in the evening when the mm -hmm. temperatures cool down. Mm -hmm. um, the annuals have been so stressed. A lot of my annuals I just had to take out of the pots. They're just gone. Right. And if right. you don't want to replace them, you know, maybe wait until mm -hmm. we get some fall things to, to put back in your planters yeah. in the fall. Just throw but, a little mulch in there and yeah. let, it, let it kind of preserve what moisture it can in right. the soil. And yeah. as far as perennials, um, the well, they're, they're setting buds, uh, our mums, uh, should be covered with buds. Now, if you want real showy mums, pinch off a bunch of those little buds. And so yeah. fewer fewer buds will make bigger flowers. Yeah, and the flowers will be bigger. They'll be bigger so. and beautiful. And keep deadheading mm -hmm. uh, as, as you can to promote more blooms. Rain right. will come, and the plants are terribly resilient. They really want to live, right. they and they really want to reproduce. And they're going to make their flowers and set seeds and... Um, so we so just got to keep, there. keep watering them, just, just keep them alive, and they'll come That's back. That's right. The lawns, um, our brown lawn is now oh, brown. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But we've been trying to get, keep like one inch mm -hmm. of water a week on the, you know, on the mm -hmm. lawn, but it's, it's really difficult. And you so might not even need to mow, but if you do, no. have it on the very highest setting right. so that all that grass can shade the roots and, mm -hmm. and hold the moisture. Yeah, don't kind of cut it low. And don't stress it with fertilizers or such. No. Just let it kind of... Kind of huddle All it there needs for is water and, and hopefully some rain. That's right. <laughs> and the roses. Mm. My roses haven't been blooming much. Oh, mine aren't either. But um, when they did bloom, I did kind of cut off the buds and blooms so that the mm -hmm. Japanese beetles wouldn't attack them. 
And I haven't had as many Japanese beetles this Not year. Not nearly as many. I maybe think maybe it's too hot for the Japanese beetles. Maybe even, they even do. the beetles don't like it. <laughs> right. It could be, but I haven't seen as That's many. That's right. But either That's way, right. they should be gone by mid-August right. if they were yes. around. And it, you should have another rebloom later in August, mm -hmm. September. So absolutely. And the trees and shrubs. Uh, check for scales and bagworms. Mm -hmm. It's not too hot for bagworms. No, bagworms I've seen yeah. on some shrubs. And do slow soaking as far as watering. Just put the hose and let it trickle so it really waters deep. You mm -hmm. want it down to those deep feeder roots. And you have to think about your big trees. Absolutely. Because I yes. did have a, an email from uh, someone, I forget who it was, mm -hmm. but they were talking about the importance of the big trees getting some moisture. If you want to just drip that hose out there for a couple hours on a large tree, Mm -hmm. The cost of the water is going to be a little high, but if you consider how much it would cost you to replace that tree, it's just minimal. just taking it down. So, <laughs> right, or just taking it down. So uh, you have to just deep indifferent. water your trees and mm -hmm. just do it slowly, let it soak in uh, so that they can a, get A good some. time to do that is overnight. Mm -hmm. Put it at a slow trickle and then uh, in the morning turn it off. Mm -hmm. And it loses less through evaporation right. doing it mm -hmm. at that time. Right. And, and vegetables, we haven't had too many. Oh, I don't have any. <laughs> the tomatoes the, uh, haven't been producing. Everybody no. says their tomatoes haven't been producing like they used to. They're not so. good crops this year. Uh, but you can plant some fall crops uh, mm -hmm. probably when, it, when the weather breaks a little bit. Start right. planting your, your beets and your uh, Japanese cabbage and spinach turnips. Spinach and turnips. I'm going to try some yeah. more lettuce again uh, mm -hmm. You know, when the weather yeah. does get a little cooler right. and try to replant some lettuce. Um, mm -hmm. So the vegetables mm -hmm. have just not been real good. Yeah. But if you have any more questions about gardening in July, the uh, Master Gardener Hotline is open this summer, and it's uh, Monday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, Friday from um, 9 to 12 and from 1 to 4. And if you just call 271-1060, um, you will be ta you can talk to a Master Gardener. If they don't have the answer to your question right immediately, because not every mm -hmm. Master Gardener knows every <laughs> answer, but we do know how to look up the answers That's and get back right. to you. Um, they will get back to you with the answers and um, they have also have a hotline or a, a website is bentoncountygardening.org and there's a lot of information on that um, on that website oh, so um, just about every in anything you'd want to know you can yeah. find and it's just filled with it and then for more information on the garden club you can go to their uh, website and it's bellavistagardenclub.com. It's very easy and it's easy to navigate. We've got a lot of information. I think we'll be putting this information on the, the, um, the uh, wildlife habitat, how to certify and, and uh, some links to the, um, to the website on our website. Mm -hmm. So we're, we'll be adding that shortly. So that should be on our website and um, along with a lot of other information. Right. And there is a little mm -hmm. section on our website called Cobb's Corner. <laughs> And there's a lot of things that Diane has added uh, onto our website. Mm -hmm. And um, our next meeting for the Garden Club is September 28th, Wednesday, uh, September 28th. And we get back into the swing of, of mm -hmm. meetings again. And we do have a plant sale scheduled for October 8th at Village Wastewater. And we'll be telling you more about that information uh, next month. We'll be talking mm -hmm. about our plant sale. And um, so you may have to replace some of these plants that have just really bit the yeah, dust with, yeah. the, with the drought and the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, so mark your calendars for that uh, plant sale October 8th and we'll talk about that more. And um, Diane, I just want to thank you for coming today and, and telling very us welcome. about the habitat. It's just it's wonderful. It's my pleasure. So um, hope I you uh, have enjoyed it. And give one last plug. Certify yeah. and post this beautiful sign by oh. your garden okay. and spread the word about the wildlife right. habitat. And I hope Thank you've you so much. Right. I hope you've enjoyed the program and will join us next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses.